Welcome to the mini lesson on divergent thinking. Uh, this is going to be uh, an introduction, uh, which would be prior to the implementation in the professional development modules uh, on building divergent thinkers in the classroom. Our focus today uh, is going to be solely explaining the concepts of divergent thinking uh, and then looking towards future implications. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, the question that we are going to pose uh, throughout this module is again an introduction to divergent thinking with a question uh, in the form of a question what is divergent thinking uh, well divergent thinking uh, is a, a creative process uh, that allows uh, individuals uh, specifically related to our scenario it would be students that will allow them to arrive at multiple solutions uh, multiple ideas, multiple concepts uh, for a single problem. This process is very, again, creative. It's very free thinking, free forming. Uh, it, it involves brainstorming. Uh, it, it just goes back to the concept that this is not traditional at all. Uh, it doesn't strive to produce uh, what I list in the PowerPoint uh, as a single pathway to a specific answer, and we'll get into that uh, a little bit later. But divergent Okay, I, th I think here it'll be really important to kind of give a juxtaposition to divergent thinking. Uh, both of these terms were kind of coined by uh, J.P. Culliford, uh, who was a psychologist. Uh, he derived the terms convergent thinking and divergent thinking. Uh, but convergent thinking, uh, and I put emphasis on the, the, the beginning, uh, is because this is the traditional form of thought. It's the direct opposite of divergent thinking in that it seeks to promote one specific traditional logical pathway to a, a solution. Again, it's one specific pathway to the solution. So, for example, one plus one is two. Very traditional. Uh, you can't argue otherwise no other ways that you can promote thought to that. That's what convergent thinking does, uh, specifically within our educational system and setup. It seeks to promote one method of doing things that produces one specific answer, uh, where if you had a multiple choice format, everyone should come to the same answer or the same solution. I, I, that, that'll be a better word for our purposes. But for example, uh, I, I've list this in the PowerPoint. Uh, let's let's uh, use an example of convergent and divergent thinking. Uh, and we'll pose the question, how do you use, your tooth, use a toothbrush? Uh, and the first thing that you think of is the traditional convergent answer. You use it to brush your teeth. Divergent thinking would be placing this object uh, in front of an individual and saying, how do you use this object? And what they would say is, uh, I use it as a toothbrush. I use it as a, uh, a cleaning agent. I clean the, the sink with it. I clean the, the toilet with it. It gets, it scrubs very. Okay, and now what we want to look at uh, which is particularly 
important when we're looking to answer the question of what is divergent thinking, we want to look at the aspects of divergent thinking. Again, that's uh, multiple solutions, uh, multiple pathways to arrive uh, at a certain solution. Uh, the first, I guess, aspect of divergent thinking, again, it's free thinking, it's free form, it's very creative in its nature. Um, it's, it's, um, it's not something that's necessarily, uh, I guess, on when, when our second point, it's personality driven. It's not based in IQ. Uh, when uh, scientists examined kind of the traits of divergent thinking, very few of those things were IQ driven. A lot of the concepts or, or the things that would show that an individual is a divergent thinker, a lot of them are rooted in aspects of their personality. And I think specifically in education, I think this can be a positive and it will allow us to better differentiate, better um, establish rapport with students because it is personality driven over IQ driven. Uh, the last thing that I want to point out as far as aspects of divergent thinking, and there are probably uh, many more aspects that we can go into, but these are the most important, is that divergent thinking is always questioning. It's always abstract. It always asks why, how, uh, give me more uh, on that concept uh, along those lines to, to draw things out of the conversation. Okay, something that's going to be a driver uh, within the mod modules that we'll examine uh, later is the George Land experiment. Uh, this was what I consider a revolutionary experiment that actually uh, really piqued my interest in divergent thinking. Uh, Land conducted an experiment uh, basically where he tested children at various ages uh, and, and matriculated through with them, ages 3, ages 5, ages 10, and 15. Uh, he tested them uh, in their various divergent thinking abilities. And what that means is, uh, for example, uh, he would leave five objects in front of the, stu the, uh, the child and, and give them a time, how would you use these objects? And basically, um, at age three to five, the students were coming up with now, I hope this uh, mini lesson has caused some or provoked some thought on uh, divergent thinking. Uh, and specifically the educational implications that it has on our profession, uh, how we can implement some of these concepts in the classroom. Uh, and we're going to talk about definitely more things uh, as it relates to their application in the classroom. Uh, but these are definitely some tools that would promote creativity and thought within the classroom. Uh, it would change the landscape of uh, a school, even a school district, particularly when students matriculate through and these concepts are implemented uh, successfully at each grade level. Divergent thinking can be something that can revolutionize the classroom uh, and I believe it can produce creative abstract thinkers uh, for the future that are problem solvers. Uh, and we'll examine this further in uh, the other modules and the other parts of the professional development module. 
Uh, I hope this professional development mini lesson has been helpful in deriving an understanding of what is